Good morning. Welcome to the MT for Christ 247 podcast. I am MT Clark, and this little podcast is actually a a, a, a Bible study. It's uh, we're on Zoom today, but uh, yeah. it's not just a Zoom meeting. It's it's a Bible study, and um, we're joined. It's a little program we call uh, Bible Study with the Cincati, because that's what it is. And the uh, the study has been sent to us by Arthur this morning, and its title is Success. So we are hopeful that uh, we'll be a success in giving God glory and uh, you know reflecting yes. on what success means uh, from yeah. a Christian worldview. And um, uh, sure. introduce ourselves again. That's uh, Arthur and Suzanne Sincati, my lovely wife, Tammy Lynn. And uh, we, we say good morning and welcome to everyone. Good morning. Uh-huh. Good morning. Let's open in prayer. Yeah. Father, we exalt you this morning and we thank you, Lord God, for your presence here in our midst. Um, we're anxious to peer into your word. The beauty of your holiness is expressed therein. And we thank you for leaving it for us, for giving it to us as a, a guide um, for our um, interactions and, and pathways in, in life. We ask for your blessing over our time together um, and um, that it would uh, truly be a, a, a edifying and a blessing to the hearer, a blessing to one another as, as well, Lord, as, as indeed <clears throat> whenever we come under the, uh, the mantle of your word, we are changed into the likeness of your son. And we're looking forward to that today. Um, and we thank you for that and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I have, uh, have a confession to make this morning. Uh, I've already done this study, and I, I, I don't, you know, like repeating, and but I often don't know until I go to save it. I don't usually check. What was so the name? Oh, so it was 2017. So maybe I'm off the hook. Yeah, because don't I'm worry. Right. It's not part it's of the so archives. I it wasn't the in the uh, uh, pod. It was never a, a broadcast. A podcast. So this is brand so new. So <laughs> it's pretty ancient. But then as I looked at the study that I wrote, uh, however many years, uh, do the math, six yeah. years ago, um, I'm using a lot of the same scripture references and the same um, uh, ideas and impressions but um, I think I really think the Lord brought this to a new level in the closing, which I'm anxious to get to. But of course, we've got to plow through some some ground before mm-hmm. we get there. We got to build a foundation. We have to uh, <clears throat> call down fire from heaven and what? all those things. <laughs> so that was the old Pentecostal model, you know. First, you build a foundation, and then you put the wood <laughs> on, and then you this. Is you know Elijah's uh, building of the uh, altar, building the altar of Mount Carmel. Um, <clears throat> so the, the title of today's study is success, and this is a this is a, a far more complicated issue, especially for Christians, and that's why I bring it forth. Uh, particularly if we consider what the opposite of success is, that would be what failure. Say again, what you say? Failure. Yeah, failure. Susanna said fail. failure. And uh, we often learn a lot about a word or um, a concept by uh, examining its natural opposite. We're not going to really do that, but I just wanted to throw that out in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the reason why this is so, so pressing on my heart and I think essential for the church mm-hmm. is because uh, Christians likewise struggle with a sense of failure, um, mm-hmm. self-included. You know, I, I uh, um, morph in and out of that uh, at, at times. And uh, we shouldn't. And the the essence is what matrix are we using? You right. know, how do we define failure or, and success? Mm-hmm. Uh, are we doing it as the world does? Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna use that matrix, you're only gonna get a worldly uh, uh, equation. You're only gonna get a, a worldly result at the mm-hmm. end of it. And and so, well, these are the, some of the things conceptually we're going to talk about. A little bit of a departure from my usual format in that I don't have a 
uh, a, a, a an opening scripture, so to speak, but we have a, a little bit of uh, of uh, narrative and dialogue going on. Mm -hmm. So, w w what a defining word for our culture! I said, perhaps for uh, uh, even for the world system, which is driven by the pursuit of success. Mm -hmm. I, I think we can all agree on that. You know, uh, everybody we're spoon fed by the media that. Um, and and especially by advertising that this is what you need, you know, to get be to the next level, uh -huh. yeah, and be successful. Buy this and you'll be successful. Do this and you'll be successful. Mm. Yeah. Have this education piece and you'll be successful. Mm. You know, the education system, you know, pumps that into kids and pumps that into people. You know, you to be successful, you have to go to college. To be successful, you have to have these degrees. To be and, and the truth is. You know, how many times did I see kids coming out of college with sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars in debt and they have a degree that they can't even get a job with? Right. You know, and, and there they are substitute teaching at the high school because they can't get a job anywhere else. Mm. So do they see themselves as being successful? Mm. Not by the world view, I guess. They would not see themselves as successful. Yeah. Well, one of the problems in that equation is that uh the world and the school system and the colleges and all of the above never really define success. They just tell you that that's what you want to be. And they sort of uh, uh, buttress that with all kinds of little uh, antidotes and parameters and, thing, and things of that sort. Michael Ramsden weighed in on that, uh, who's formerly president of RZIM. And he once said that success has no meaning as a word. Uh, uh, a donkey, for instance, is, is successful at being a donkey. So big deal, right? <laughs> Success just by itself is a meaningless word. It, 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 in, in this, we immediately recognize that um, conceptually, success requires a qualifier in order to uh, have meaning. And we have no shortage of qualifiers that we may place before or after the word in order to justify our existence and to fit the equation. Uh, so, you know, it could be financial. I'll be successful when I'm making six figures or when I have a 30,000 or 3,000 square foot uh, house or when or 30,000 30, square, square foot. I know people who have 30,000 square foot houses. Yes, do. Um, it, you know, I'll, I'll be successful if you're a young person uh, when I'm married, when I find, you know, my soulmate or my uh, that that love of my life uh, i'll be successful when uh, i remember I, I had a had a cousin this is years ago uh prior oh. prior to his his first marriage and his because okay. uh, the first one was not successful right. uh, uh, and he he uh his formula probably at about 21 or so for success was when he had the mint car and the mint girl the mint yeah. car and the mint girl well, he had uh, the mint car and he got the mint girl he did. and the marriage didn't last. Yeah. You know, both of those tarnish, don't they? <laughs> and um, so uh, most uh, the most practical expression of success is is to achieve a desired outcome or aim. Yeah. So, you, you know, you study for the math test. Uh, you get all the answers right. You're successful in that, you're in, in that sphere, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very uh, pragmatic. Um, so in regard to that very practical equation, <clears throat> Joshua 1, eight says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you may, you will make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. There you now, go. So the simple equation there, all the way back in Joshua's time, is yeah. read the book, do what it says, have success. <laughs> it's yeah. Sort of quid pro quo with God, right? You know, it sounds like all the self help books on the shelves. Exactly, it does. Mm -hmm. Right, it really does. Uh, yeah. It's a simple equation. Uh, interesting how, in the above verse, it blends prosperity with success, mm. and um, and that is certainly one of the many qualifiers that uh, give people a, a, a sense of, of success, so to uh, speak. 
just to speak to that quickly, just an interject. Yeah, we did prison last night and had our Bible studies. And one of the things I was talking with the girls we were talking about, and we got to talking about, you know, what what keeps you and what what keeps you moving forward and, and takes care of you. When you get out of jail, what are you what are you going to need? Well, you need shelter and you need you know a job and all those kind of things. And I said, you know, <clears throat> I heard one time that said if you have a hundred dollars and you pay ninety nine, you're rich. Mm. And the girls looked at me and I said. And if you have $100 and you pay $101, you're poor. Mm-hmm. And then they went, oh, if you have the $1 left, then you still have money in your pocket. If you've overspent, then you are in debt. And I said, right. Mm-hmm. It's not a matter of how much money you have. It's how you measure your money and how you, you budget and take care of yourself. Yeah. So you know, prosperity is, can we can all jump on that prosperity wagon and say, oh, oh yeah, you know, once you come to Jesus, you're going to have a, houses and cars and boats and trips and mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. That may not very well be true. I mean, it might be, but it may very well not be true. And just living within your means yeah. is success. It's, yeah. it's, it's huge. It, it, it really is. And we all have heard stories of uh, celebrities, uh, particularly, who have made millions uh, and uh, are uh, bankrupt, have to file for bankruptcy, or um, are, are go, have die with penniless, uh, and, and that sort of thing. So that you could have a lot, but you could also there's no, no shortage of opportunities to spend it either. And right. so that's a great example of just <laughs> living within in your means is at least in the in the financial spectrum a formula for success uh you you have a budget you keep it you're successful (laughs) again once again this is very we're just dealing with practical uh right uh, right right now Um, another example of the practical is uh in uh, genesis 24 12 when um this is uh abraham's servant and he's sent to uh find a wife for isaac and he prays you know before encountering this uh these women at, at the well he says then he said oh oh lord god of my master abraham please give me success this day mm-hmm. and uh that was a good solid prayer and god answered that prayer mm-hmm. because he kind of laid out a fleece and said you know let let the woman that offers me water and actually waters my camels you know, be the one Mm. And she did, and she was. And that was uh, I love it when that happens, when, yeah. it's, when it's that easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So, again, another very practical example. We, uh, we got a, had a desired outcome. And a good, and, good verse for uh, answered prayer as well. Mm-hmm. And a good verse for answered prayer. So I'm trying to point mm-hmm. towards what the, I think the ending of this is going to be all about. So. Well, I hope Keep so. Our eye open. Maybe it's a, a surprise ending. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But... Um, so Job was a successful guy by the world standards, but by the time chapter six rolls around, he says, and is success driven from me? Oftentimes success is uh, not evaluated well until it's lost. Right. It's like he, lost, he lost it all. He certainly did. Yeah. He certainly did. And and he, he struggled and ping-ponged. Job is a long <laughs> book, and it is a lot of uh, thought. Him. Right, uh, infused in there. Um, very human. Very mm-hmm. human, I think. I agree. Yeah. If, if you finally, here, Genesis 39 2 describes Joseph's experience with Potiphar. And it says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So, um, because of God's call on Joseph's life, uh, in, in spite of the fact that, especially in those early years, he he was he seemed to be on a on a roller coaster. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, in, he, even in Potiphar's house, he was sold into slavery. So exactly, you know, we qualify yeah. the success with where you are. So that's also you know, sure. there's a matter of perspective. Uh, he, you know, matter of perspective. Matter of perspective yeah. He was successful, very successful for but a time. He wasn't free, he was, but he was yeah. a success in, in where he was put. You know. So, yeah, yeah. Um, even in the prison, he flourished. Right. So, so in the new covenant, uh, uh, we 
unveil uh, a new equation uh, mm -hmm. for success. And in Galatians 2, 16, it says, knowing that a man is not qualified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah. That kind of contradicts Joshua 1, 8. You know, That's Joshua 1, 8 is saying, keep the law, read the book, keep the, do what it says, you're successful. Um, and, the problem and, is, is we can't keep the law. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, and, and, you know, that, I mean, that's the game changer in the New Testament right there. I mean, he's and knowing yeah. that we're not justified by the works of the law, but by right. faith in Christ. It's a different, it's a different economy. Um, it's not a performance-based thing, which you would sort of get from uh, the early verses of reading the Bible and doing what it says. It's like, that sounds like if I do, I get. Um, yeah. Whereas, whereas putting your faith, it's a different type of doing. Uh, you put your faith yes. in Jesus, you surrender to his lordship. And that's the act um, that, that, that is done uh, that gives you success. Um, right. So and it's nothing you do, you know, it's, it's not work you perform. Uh, it's the work that Jesus did and having faith that he is who he said he is and uh, surrendering to him. Yeah. Uh, this is, one of, uh, one, of the lines, one of the lines from uh from uh the 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 chosen movie that I watched yesterday um ripped my heart out right right in the middle of you know um right in the middle of it uh you know a simple scene uh they were talking about uh they were talking about Peter you know this is uh in in the chosen well I don't want to give it all away but <laughs> um that's where you know, philippi comes up and they you know jesus is talking to his disciples about who everyone says he is because he's got a successful ministry right um so people are saying you know and they share with all the different views they say you're this per you know like this person because of this and you're like this person because of that and peter you know emphatically says you know you know basically in essence forget all that you're you're, you're the Christ and uh, you're the Messiah. And, um, obviously, you know, following along with scripture, um, Jesus says, your, your name is Peter. And, you know, this has been revealed to you by heaven. And, um, you know, after, after he does that, all the apostles are in a stir because they were like, he just named him the, the foundation of the church. And there's a big debate and they're all upset and they're, you know, talking about who's the greatest there. He just called him the greatest, you know, basically. And Matthew uh, goes to Jesus and he says, you know, you sort of, you sort of, um, you, you know, this is obviously uh, artistic license. Uh, you sort of just made Peter like, uh, you know, the head guy and he's not, you know, excuse me, but he's not exactly perfect. He's done this. He's done that. You know, I'm paraphrasing, of course. Um, and Jesus said to him, I, I make men into what they're not. Or like, and, and it just sort of, you know, really, really ripped my heart out because I'm like, wow. that's, that's exactly what Jesus does. He makes men yeah. into what they're not. And, and mm. in the, in the character arc of uh, Peter, Peter, there is transformation. And after the proclamation is made you know because he says yeah. this and then people are like oh we got to start calling peter and he starts acting um more like the rock living according to his identity um mm. that jesus gives him and you know the you know the the teaching on you know how many times do i have to forgive somebody comes up and <laughs> we, yeah. we see, you know, the, they take the license of uh, showing how peter forgives matthew uh for the things he's done against him and it, it's just a great a great great part of the uh scene yeah. and shows you know when we come into this economy of god's kingdom and, and faith that things are changed and yeah. uh you know the way we're a success doesn't come from the things we do it comes as a yeah. as a natural um outpouring of who we are in christ and when we yeah. start living according to who he said we are right yeah, right. this is great. You're filling in a lot of, of the gaps, and I love mm -hmm. that example. Um, Peter was a successful fishing fisherman, fisherman, right? Uh, he had a successful fishing business from from the glimpse that that we have of it. And um, but uh, God had a, di a a different plan and was making him into you know what he was not, uh, and yeah. that's very 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 powerful. Yeah. We're going to talk more about that. 
Um, just to finish this piece about the law, Hebrews 7, 19 says that the law made nothing perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or, or mm -hmm. I might say successful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not that the law was bad or imperfect, but our ability to keep it. You know, following Joshua's injunction, Israel fails miserably, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, again, we've already mentioned that. Um, our ability to keep the law is what is um, uh, compromised. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what does success look like in the New Covenant? Well, uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, or uh, thank you, right? 2 Corinthians 12, 10, for when I am weak, I am strong. Well, that's seemingly an inversion of our presupposition of what success looks like, right? We're supposed to be strong, right? Yeah. To stand up to everything, be able to handle it all. Mm. Um, all the apostles, except for John, you know, they died a criminal's death. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it doesn't sound very successful, <laughs> does it? And even John, tradition has it, he was boiled in oil once and, right. and tried to, to kill him. They sent him to the island of Pat, Patmos, was and, exiled. And, in and, the, and, in, and in, historically, in the early church, the early church fathers, you know, and, you know, it's reflected here in, in, in what Paul said, you know, they really did count, count themselves worthy for suffering for the church, yes. you know. Uh -huh. Um, that was like the highest calling is to die to die for the kingdom right and that's right. that's uh and, you know that doesn't that doesn't fly uh with uh, the world's view of success indeed mm -hmm. exactly so uh i submit that finding alignment with god's will for our lives is true success mm -hmm. we're, we're already hinting and, and touching upon that not all of us will be called to the above mentioned experiences, but alignment with God's will it often is mm -hmm. painful to our flesh and contrary to our sense of success. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, Peter was a great example for that. He was he was tracked to just continue and see again seemingly his his parents uh, or his father's business. Uh, continuing the fishing business, probably raising a family and, mm. and, and considering himself successful in that economy and in that era of, of time. But mm. God had another idea. And so how do we govern this alignment is a good question. You know, this is uh, uh, last week we did a study about ordering our steps yeah. Order my steps according to your word, Lord, or, or that was two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is <laughs> it's all it's all a blur. It's sometimes. all a blur. <laughs> yeah, but believe it, believe it or not, there really is <laughs> there really is a, a thread to uh, to all of this, these studies. Um, yeah. So how do we govern this uh, alignment? Uh, By the word. First Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And another example from 1 Peter 2.15 says, For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Mm -hmm. And finally, John is very bold in 1 John 2.17, where he says, And the world is passing away, you know. So, again, why subscribe to its formula for success? The world is passing away mm -hmm. and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he does a, 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 an equation there. Of course, he, he, you know, he goes into it elsewhere. Some of the, 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 the bullet points, you know, that are essential for successful success in, in God's economy. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is awkwardly still uh, I'm seeing still a lot of qualifiers to determine success. There's still something of a, of a quid pro quo here. Um, none of us are 100% regarding mm -hmm. the, even the New Testament scriptures and the New Testament matrix for uh, uh, success. We all right. fall short. We all fall short, yeah. Yeah, there's the verse in James that points that out. It's like to do what is right and not to do what is sin. And yeah. you know, even though you might have thrown off a lot of stuff from the you know, uh, from the flesh or the, you know, breaking the law. Um, yep. How will we ever know if we perfectly do the will of God? Well, yeah, we won't. And I don't think we ever do because yeah. on this, in this mortal coil, we will not ever be totally successful as far as Christ is concerned until we have our new bodies and our new 
place in heaven, then we will, we will really be successful, but we still strive for it. It's not something yeah, we that can, we can. Oh, yeah, don't get me wrong. Throw up our hands and say, oh, I can never do this. So what's the, what to yeah. use? Why should I even I'm try? just saying sinless yeah, perfection. Okay. Not even no matter what, how much you clean up your act, you'll never know for sure if you're doing the will of God perfectly. And the word tells us that everyone sins. So even if right. you're you're good at keeping keeping the law, there's got to be something there that you're missing. You know, so well, you guys you up and fall all the time. You guys are setting me up here, well, we can, <laughs> but we can progress and I grow too. To, well, I, I hope to thwart that perception. Really, <laughs> this is I'm I'm okay. uh, I'm I'm coming in up the other side of the mountain on this. All right, with, all right. with a with a new vision. Yeah, uh, okay. for, for success. And see, the, the trouble is, and the reason why I introduced this study, um, especially for believers, is that, again, I emphasize in the beginning of the study that even we as Christians can wear this mantle of failure, feeling like mm -hmm. that even in our uh, Christian endeavors, we're a failure. You know, I, I, uh, I, I shared the gospel with somebody and they didn't accept Christ. Right. I prayed for somebody and they weren't healed. I read my Bible and prayed in the morning and then I had a crappy day. And right. so, you know, when these become our aims and we're expecting this outcome and it doesn't mm -hmm. happen, mm -hmm. we feel, 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 you know, feeling is, is, is very is essential in this, uh, in what we're talking about here. Right. We feel like a failure. Sure. And, right. and let's say a natural, <laughs> Uh, outcome of of what we've just experienced, but w what I hope to present in 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 the uh, you know the, the you know that's an interesting point. And, yeah. You know the fact that you started this off with a former you know the president of formerly of RZIM. Is yeah. The sort of appropriate because that that whole ministry went belly up because of the scandal uh, revolving around um, Ravi Zacharias. Yes. And I don't know if you knew this, but after after they, um, you know, after that thing went through and they discontinued that ministry, um, uh, his daughter actually started another another apologetics ministry Good. Uh, basically a year later. And this isn't a happy story or, or it is what it is. Uh, you know, basically that ministry um, basically lasted a year and then that that was discontinued as well. Um, yes. So, by our view, we go, well, you know, that was, you know, um, her best attempt to to carry on the work of apologetics and, and obviously wasn't, you know, they failed. But yeah. we don't know. God works all things together for good. So, you know, yeah. our expectations and God's will aren't necessarily the same thing. We would think surely everyone should be saved. Well, that's not the that's not the story, you know. That's you know that's what we would think that everyone should be saved, everyone should be walking with the Lord, everyone will be living a righteous Christian life, and it'll be Christian, you know, Christian planet. Um, but that that's not what the word says, and so you know we shouldn't condemn ourselves for for those uh, expectations. Um, so yeah. I say not perfection uh, but progress, and then we don't know. You know what what God's going to use and what He's not going to use. Yeah, um, I was um, I'm glad you brought up the example of RZIM and Ravi Zacharias. I was very plugged into that ministry, right? And, and you benefited uh, from it greatly. And you it was a very, it was a very successful ministry. It yeah. was reaching people. It yeah. was going all over the world. It had um, uh, many outreaches. Uh, so and rocked by an ugly scandal that we would say, okay, it was a failure. It was unsuccessful, but the, tr I've, I've always maintained personally that the truths that were precipitated and taught by Ravi, um, are, are, are main, maintained. It doesn't undermine the, the truth of what he said, just because the vessel was, you know, broken and, and messed up and et cetera. Because all uh, those vessels are broken. You know, when you think you know, about and, 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 you know, and, any of these other, you know, yeah. evangelists, big, big, big evangelists, you know, the, the whole uh, Jim Baker and Tammy Faye Baker, you know, things that fall apart, you look back and you say, 
oh, well, how can I believe what they said? But you should, because we are not right. perfect people. Right. And they were the, not perfect people. No, yeah, exactly. And in this example, the work itself was good because it was based on the word of God, yes. the truth of logic and everything that goes with scripture. So that was good. But also the falling apart is good because it shows yes. us that even the mighty could fall and that mm -hmm. secret sin is something that should have no part in someone in your life. We should live in the light, not in the dark. And yeah. uh, you can't you can't say one thing and then live a different way because it's you know inconsistent with with what we're who we're supposed to be in Christ. Right. Uh, so and I think also from it all, you know, yes. the good and the bad. I think also it, it points us to the fact it keeps reminding us we're not supposed to be looking at a human being. Right. Our eyes are not supposed to be looking so at lessons, you know? or any of these other people. I mean. God bless his soul. You know, I'm, 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 you know, I pray that he, he reconciled and that he recognized everything. And he can, you know, we yeah. judge. But I'm just simply saying, we as human beings have got to stop looking at a per person. Yes, right. exactly. How many, times, how many times have people left a church because the pastor retired or the pastor right. was moved to another church, and they're like, "Well, if Pastor So and So is not there, I'm not going to church." Yeah. What? Yeah. Why are you looking at the person right. and not at the Word of God, not Jesus, yeah. and not at God? yeah. yeah. And That's we're all we're doing. all called to evaluate that on our own. On so our own, we take person. we we might like our particular teachers, even mm -hmm. our group, you know, whoever's mm -hmm. listening now. Yep. Uh, uh, evaluate, yeah. be Bereans, evaluate what we have to say and put it to the test of the word of God and how it uh, comes alongside your life and your personal experience and other teachers as well. Yeah. So all of these are important components um, in the ex success equation. But mm -hmm. I, I, I do submit that there's there's still a, a, a higher calling going over yes. here yeah. on here. Let's and the, the good news of the scripture is that we are successful in Christ <laughs> by default. We, we are just we're just plain successful in Christ. If you are a Christian or a believer or born again or saved or however you want to frame it, you're successful. You're yeah. a success. You know, you wear that banner, get the T-shirt with the exclamation point and everything. You are successful. Let's just make this practical since we're, we're focusing on the practical. Mm -hmm. What is your goal? Do you aim to be loved by God? You are. Yay. You're successful. Oh, you know, yeah. Ephesians 1.6 says uh, he made us accepted in the beloved. Wow. <laughs> well, that's a good wow. start. Um, do, you, do you hope to go to heaven someday? You will. Yes. Success. Um, who he calls, you know, uh, uh, whomever calls on the name of the Lord shall yeah, be saved. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you do you wish uh, you had help and trouble? You do. Success. Yeah. Successful. There's the equation. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in the time of trouble. Um, would you like to access the resources of heaven? You can. <laughs> You're successful, right? You know, Second Peter 1 3 says, as a, as divine power has given to uh, or his divine power was yeah. given to us uh, all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who calls us by glory and virtue wow. so, That's a very, we, so very this is these thing. are the promises of the these are the real promises of the gospel yeah. these are the things that we possess in christ and um now you know what one could say well you, you know our our ability or our Really, our choice to accent them is sometimes compromised. Uh, so again, that's uh, that puts us in the in the equation, and we're the culprits. But uh, the overarching banner over our lives is success. Yes. Uh, we are successful, and and um, you know, walking in that notion will precipitate, I I believe, other forms of success. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't fit uh, the world's uh, again the world's matrix of formula. You might be martyred. You might be thrown in jail in Turkey. You might be uh, uh, fired from your job because mm. you uh, you share the gospel with a coworker. There mm. may be a lot of touch points where, again, you you're not successful in in the eyes of the world. But number one, essential, overarching, you're a success. Mm. You're yeah. successful. You're not a failure mm. as a Christian. Okay, um, and. Um, and it, it let everything flow out of that foundational understanding. And that's, um, and that's the basis of our self-worth and, and our, our, yeah, our yeah. success. And, and that's the thing I hold on to, um, you know, when I'm weak, I'm, you know, 
God is strong because he's, he's made me accepted. He's, right. he's made me significant and he makes me secure. And no matter what, fa whatever I face, whatever failures I have, I remember that. And right. it's, it's, it's a great, um, it's a great hope that we have in Christ and it can pull you exactly. out of, um, you know, a lot of self-condemnation when you know that it's like, you know, yes, what? Yes, I'm not yes. judged by my performance, which is so yes. antithetical to the world system. Uh, oh, I screwed up. Well, God still loves me. And that might seem pat, but you know what? It's oh, true. You know, it might it be true. like, well, aren't you? Yeah. You know what? I messed up. I made mistakes. I'm going to do the best I can to correct things and do a good job. But at the end of the day, I'm accepted in the beloved, you know? Right, and right, right. I'm not I'm not worthy because of my good works. I am worthy right. because the Lord has called me out of the darkness and made me his son. And is right. yeah. so and I think Mark to add to that what you just said is is that we being Christians, you know, we mess up. Everybody messes up. But from a Christian point of view, we say, Oh, somebody says, Oh, such and such happened. You say, Yep, I did that. I messed up. Yeah. I should have done something. I'm sorry, and I will rectify it. Mm -hmm. I will reconcile that. I'll make it better. I'll do better. Yep. You know, whereas the world would say, whoever did it was like, don't tell anybody that I did. You know, keep shut. Mm -hmm. Don't shut your mouth. I'm not going to admit that. You know, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. I'm not going to do this. That's the world's view. But a Christian owns up to whatever is going on and then makes it better and learns from their mistakes. They should, they yeah. should anyway, yes. Yeah. Um, one of the... Achilles heel of this um, self-condemnation or, you know, considering ourselves as, as failures is that we lie against the word of God mm -hmm. and we put our opinion of, of us, of ourselves above yeah. God's opinion of us, you know, and, and he thinks we're great. And <laughs> he really does. Right. <laughs> Believe it or not. My and so he does. Uh, and, and so when we put God's uh, opinion uh, above our own, that that's that re diminishes our our power and our effectiveness uh, with the gospel, and um, uh, it, it's it. This has been a, a, a reoccurring theme for me in some of some counseling situations, and even in the prison last night. I I really emphasized this point, and and I I, I talked about this process of sanctification that we're in right now, and it is a process. And how uh, I said uh, those things. <clears throat> I said I said uh, we don't we do not do in it or uh, we don't do it on our own. And not mm -hmm. that uh, it's not about us trying harder or joining a club or a support group or church. Those things are good and important. But God gives us a, some supernatural gifts uh, along the way. He gives us His Word. He gives us His Holy Spirit. And he offers us forgiveness along the way, too. Mm. So those three components, they're all supernatural and they're all gifts of free gifts of God. His word, you know, is our instruction guide. And that goes back to Joshua 1, 8 again. You know, read the book, do what it says, you know, successful. Um, and our disability to do that is helped along by the Holy Spirit. And yet, even when we do engage so-called failure, we also have forgiveness to to rest on and we don't use it as a you know a, a constant scapegoat where we're running no, and and, and no. just doing whatever we want and then relying on god's forgiveness but he he offers that he he, he says I, I forgive you my son let's let's get up and 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 try again and uh -huh. and now you've you've learned from this experience and i i, I know you'll you'll do better the next time uh, this is the encouraging father and, and uh, the lover of our soul yeah. that um, is cheering us on. You know, he, he, he will be successful and he wants us to exceed even in, you know, the terra firma in all our, our endeavors, sure. most significantly in the, in the Great Commission, right? Making right. disciples, casting out demons, healing the sick, sp sharing the gospel, um, spreading the word, advancing the kingdom, all of those things. Um, he's he's cheering us on and, and he wants us to be successful in those areas. But even he is the one that gives the increase in all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I, I lay my hands on the sick, but I have no power in and of myself. God right. gives the increase. Yeah. You know, I'm right. just I'm just obedient to the to the word and, and the instruction. 
Um, I share the gospel with people, but God gives the increase. Yeah. We know yeah. that. I can't convince anybody of anything. No, we can't. Uh, and I've tried. <laughs> I've really I tried. Really, sure. <laughs> you know, in, in one of the books that I've been reading uh, called uh, His Yoke is Easy and His Burden is Light, it talks about, you know, burden bearers and people that, that always want to try and fix mm -hmm. or, or take care of other people. You know, they're always very yeah, sensitive well. and take care of people. But there was a whole chapter about being the false Christ. The false Christ. In that you think that you you take on the role of Jesus. Well, I'm going to get them saved. I'm going to get them fixed. I'm mm -hmm. going to get them better. I, I, I. No, you're not going to get anything done. You can present how they can get fixed and how that they can get better. But it's really mm -hmm. Jesus in the whole. He's the true Christ. Yeah. He's the true yeah. Savior. Yeah. I, I can't take that. I can't usurp that job of his. That's not my job. Yeah. That's his job. And so many of us who are, are you know, yeah, sensitive and religion. You know, this week yeah. you had, I had someone in our group basically ask me, what about the, um, they admittedly have no no Bible knowledge at all. And they were invited into our group and have been, you know, coming and getting encouraged and, and everything. And uh, this week was, uh, the lesson was on hope. And the big focus on that was our hope is in Jesus. And um mm -hmm. One of the scriptures that was shared in the lesson is Jesus, for, uh, John 14, 6, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but except through, through me. Um, and so after the lesson, this woman, I didn't teach it. I didn't teach the lesson. Uh, this lady <laughs> this lady asked me, uh, you know, what about the good, what about the good Jews and the good Muslims? And I said, well, um, there are no good people because everyone sins. Um, yeah. And um, that, you know, our hope is in Jesus because he He gives us forgiveness through our sin, uh, for our sins and he gives us eternal life when we put our faith in him. Um, and without that, you know, without that, we we are, you know, we, we face God's wrath, face his judgment. And I said, it's the S exclusivity of Jesus Christ to save. That's one of the hard truths that I struggled with. <laughs> Before I was a Christian too, right. and I told her as compassionately as I can that we believe in the Word of God, and that's what God's Word tells us, and uh, mm -hmm. and we've experienced uh, eternal life through to our faith in Jesus, and experiencing yep. victory and freedom because of it, and that it's transformed our lives, and that we we are powerless to do anything than just to, to point to Scripture. And, and that's what I did for her. I said, you should read John, uh, the book of John, John 3, the great, you know, the great message of, you know, him dying for us is followed up by, you know, you're con if you don't believe you're condemned already. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so it's tough because I wanted to comfort this person and pull them into mm -hmm. them with their, with their, uh, with their misconceptions as well, but I couldn't do it. Um, yeah. And in my encouragements, you know, I always say keep walking and talking with God, but invariably throughout my messages, I always go to Jesus because I don't want any, you know, easy peasy spirituality to make give anyone the idea that you can come to the come to come into the kingdom other than through Jesus. Um, right. Right. because of that truth and you know i can't say and and my female leader you know basically found out about this later and she was convicted because she taught the lesson and you know basically she was like am i gonna should i reach out to this person and i said well pray about it and see what the lord tells you to do but we have to remember in this ministry we can't fix anybody and we can't save anybody. And it's, yeah. You know, yeah. what we can do is implore them to follow the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, surrender your life to him, and we leave the results up to God. And yeah. that, that gave her comfort, you know, and uh, we can't, you know, give that success to somebody in their life. You know? Yeah, I, I often like to intersect the exclusivity of Christ when people present that and as a stumbling block or as a, uh, something that's just reprehensible, um, mm -hmm. that all worldviews and all religions are mutually exclusive. Or exclusive, right. Like, you know, uh, fundamentalist Muslims believe that we're infidels and we're all going to hell. 
uh, apart from, you know, uh, keeping the, the tenets of the Quran and following Allah. So uh, they're so all... The and, and, and the yeah. Buddhists, uh, I know from yes. my experience, the Buddhists would say we're... We're all deluded, and we're not gonna we're not gonna make it to Nirvana. We're gonna have a bad rebirth because we don't believe in their truth. Of yeah, the with the yeah. Hindu and so um, all worldviews and religions have to uh, answer to that. And, but Christianity often gets tagged um, because you know we're vulnerable in in that respect, and we're very we're very emphatic that Jesus said, "I am the truth, the life, and the way. No one comes to the Father except through me." Right. Um, well, that was an invitation. It wasn't a pompous statement. It wasn't an arrogant statement. It was an invitation, mm -hmm. uh, and the invitation is not that difficult or complicated, really. It's come, it, 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 all you who are who are hungry, you know, and thirsty, come, you know, all you are who are weary and heavy laden, come. <laughs> and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I qualified that, uh, it by saying, you know, she because she said something about the other prophets, and I said, well, Jesus is significantly different because he was he died and he rose again. And all the yeah. other guys are dead, and uh, Jesus yeah. showed that he was truly, truly God, you know, fully God and fully man by his resurrection, and that's the that's the life that we have hope in. You know? Exactly. Um, so. Don't shut me down on this next statement. No, though. No, I, 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 said, with you. So I, I would, uh, I would, I would caution my next statement by confirming that it's it's never God's will to sin. Okay, nice. we were talking about the will of God earlier in the uh, lesson, but I will say that it's questionable whether we can avoid uh, the will of God. We're we're caught up in a great narrative. As small or great as our part may be, it's not the measure of our success because it's not about us. It's about him. His will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's unavoidable. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, we are uh, crashing towards the end times. And uh, the narrative is, is coming towards a close. And, you know, it's going to end exactly the way he said it was. And it's going to end exactly on the nanosecond that he uh, uh, predicted. Uh, and the father knows the time. And, and uh, not... It, he's not going to deviate from his plan one iota. And so even our sin and our messing up, uh, you know, I would submit, uh, I'm not saying that it's the will of God, but he takes even our failures and makes something beautiful out of them. That's, and that's, and that's uh, it says. Romans chapter eight, right? All yeah. things work together for good. That, right. For those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It doesn't mean that we do good all the time, right. but the when we've got the the love factor in place and our determination you know is to follow hard after him mm -hmm. then the right trajectory at least you know mm -hmm. and the periphery of stuff again we we have we have forgiveness in the equation okay mm -hmm. so the peripheral stuff may ebb and flow but we're if we're on the right trajectory um and, and the love factor is in place mm -hmm. then um you know, I submit that we're successful <laughs> and we're doing the will of God. Um, if you wish to feel, and I put that in quotes, successful, because this is a big component in the in, in the whole equation, uh, as a uh, uh, as the, believe the best, I, I believe uh, the yep. best indicator is peace. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you have a peace about your your faith if you have a peace with your about your relationship with christ if you have a peace i just i read uh, uh a brother sent me um a journal entry some of his journal entries recently it's gone mm. through some terrible terrible physical. health problems and mm. issues two surgeries and both of them were compromised and just really really bad and his, sh his faith was shaken his faith was shaken but he had a real encounter with christ mm. and um you know uh and he and he went through that dark valley of the soul where he was questioning his own faith and questioning is there sin in my life and asking all those those very fundamental questions that we're tempted to engage with mm -hmm. when when these sort of things happen. But he's come out the other end, you know, mm -hmm. because he had the right trajectory, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so that uh, comes by embracing all the above truths yeah. and um, trusting him. With the outcome, mm -hmm. he is the great qualifier. This is the this is the this is the main point. 
He is the great qualifier. Mm -hmm. He's qualified us for sonship. Yes. And we couldn't do that on our own. Mm -hmm. And that sounds pretty successful to me. You know, God has, is, he is the qualifier. Mm -hmm. So success, we started out in our study uh, saying the word requires a qualifier. And yeah. Christ is the great qualifier, yeah. you know, yeah. our lives are joined to his and that's what makes us successful. All right. Amen. And it's not an excuse to just do whatever we want. And, you know, if I if if I if I kick the dog today or if I yell at uh, the pastor or something like that, um, it doesn't matter what I do because I'm successful anyway. And Christ, that's yeah. not yeah. everybody knows that's not what we're saying, you mm. know, but um, at least I hope they know. That at least I hope <laughs> don't yell at your pastor today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even not, if you can, want to. Even Christianity you, is not I can do whatever I want. I, <laughs> I've, I've actually been been uh, you know encountered people who say well you know because of this i can do whatever i want it's no right. big deal because right. once saved always saved and i yeah. can i can reject god and i can go through a time period well you might can be a prodigal for a while mm. and pray that you don't die in that prodigal state mm. right where you rejected god where you rejected the holy spirit where you rejected you know living under his law um but you you have to reconcile. You have to come back. Father right. did come back, and he did come back to becoming a son again. But he yeah. had to humble himself. Yeah, yeah, that's right. good. You know, good you example. have to go back to that that place where. If we're running in that error that we don't understand God's holiness and our need to be more like Jesus, well, we yeah. we we could die and discover that Jesus revealed to us that He never knew us, and you know, yeah, we, right. Yeah. You know, you missed it. Scary <laughs> verses yeah. in the Bible, yes. Yeah. But God is God, and Christ is Jesus, and he did die for us in our sins, and yeah. we can believe in that, and he is our salvation. Yeah. And we just want to keep pointing you, dear listener, or dear whoever is watching us, please yeah. keep looking to Jesus. We're not your Savior. Right. We're just pointing you towards him. Indeed. And you take him as your your personal savior, and then you will be successful. Yeah. Not as the world sees you, yeah. but as God sees you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well said, honey. Yeah. So, yeah. so brother, would you uh, mind successfully praying us out for? <laughs> <laughs> Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for the success that you've made us through opening our eyes to the truth of who Jesus Christ is, uh, the mm -hmm. one and only true. Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior, and the Christ. And uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, bringing us into your family through our faith in him and for forgiving our sins and giving us a new life. Uh, the yeah. moment we, we said yes to Jesus. And uh, Lord, we just pray for you to be with us um, uh, for the for today and, and the upcoming days. But for today, we want we want you to be with us to, to worship. Uh, lead us uh, in the way we should go in terms of worship today. We pray for you to bless the pastors that will speak the, the word of God. We pray, pray for you to bless the uh, worship teams that will raise your name and glory. And, uh, Lord, we pray for the fellowship of the saints that yes. we to know who they are in Christ and to uh, encourage other people to know you. And, Lord, we mm -hmm. just you know, pray for the Holy Spirit to move through it all to uh, open new eyes and new hearts to the possibilities yes. of a life in your kingdom and uh, a life free from sin uh lord uh, you will guide us as we go uh, we just pray for you to call us to follow uh, lord we thank you we praise you we love you and we pray all these things in the mighty name of jesus amen amen, amen. 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 all right well that concludes i think that was a successful bible study <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and, uh, that concludes our study for today. If you'd like to see uh, more of what we have to say, um, we have a playlist of all our, our podcasted episodes on YouTube and wherever uh, podcasts are found and um, basically uh, uh, and and videos since 2021, I think. Um, wow. but, um, uh, 132 episodes of this. Uh, wow. episode. My goodness. And, uh, that's a lot to listen to. So if you, if you want, it'll be more encouraging, yeah. more of the same. 
uh, available to you. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for uh, the the people yes, who find our ministry. Just this week, I was I was someone texted me, asked, "Is this Mark?" And I said yes. And it turned out to be a guy that I had had in a text chain that was really the beginning of this this whole ministry um, back back in 2020 when I was just encouraging guys with my messages via text. Mm -hmm. And he reached out and I told him, hey, yeah, we have the blog and the podcast and the YouTube channel. And so he subscribed, uh, you know, basically and he testified that he's been walking with the Lord ever since. And, uh, yes. you know, that things may have been difficult at times, but he's still he's still with the Lord and and things are so much better because of his faith in Christ. We uh, Amen. And Brian Dugan uh, for, for reaching out for us and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, and so uh, get on the love train, get on the truth train, uh, you know, walk and talk with God with us as uh, all yeah, we yeah. do represent his kingdom and, and uh, you know, let people know that Jesus Christ is Lord. So Amen. Peter and Amen. Susanna and Tammy Lynn and I, we say thank you and God bless you all. God bless.